Fed now is coming this month. DeSantis vows to ban CBDCs. Evertoss acquires BitSure. Zokyo is partnering with Conflux. Apex Storage releases a crazy NVMe PCIe board. Dynex gets another mining pool. LuxOS gets an update. And Rigel Miner releases a new update. Let's get into all of that and more in today's episode of Blocks, your one stop shop for all cryptocurrency news as quickly as possible from the perspective of a cryptocurrency miner. I want to talk to you about the FedNow service. It's actually a really terrifying development in the world of instant payments. Basically, the FedNow service is going to be available to depository institutions in the United States, and it's going to enable individuals and businesses to send instant payments through their depository institution accounts. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that you're able to transfer funds from your account to someone else's account in near real time at any time, any day of the year. No more waiting for the next business day or dealing with delays. It's all about making payments instant and convenient. Bye-bye privacy. The FedNow service is designed to be a flexible, neutral platform that supports a broad variety of instant payments. It's not limited to just one type of payment, and it's not just about the basic functionality either. Depository institutions and their service providers will be able to build on this fundamental capability to offer value-added services to their customers. So there's a lot of room for innovation, growth, and of course, manipulation. Now let's talk about some key features of the FedNow service. First of all, it's going to have an uninterrupted 24-7, 365 processing system. That means it's going to be able to be available at all times, even on weekends and holidays. You won't have to worry about limitations on when you can make a payment. Of course, security is top priority. The FedNow service will have security features in place to support payment integrity and data security. Your funds and personal information will be protected from everyone except the government. One interesting thing about the FedNow service is the liquidity management tool. This tool will enable participants in the service to transfer funds to one another to support liquidity needs related to payment activity in the FedNow service. It's all about making sure that there's enough liquidity to keep the payments flowing smoothly. Presumably, this means that money printer goes burr. Now let's talk about some additional features. The first release of the FedNow service will include optional features like fraud prevention tools, the ability to join initially as a receive only participant, request for payment capability and tools to support participants in handling payment inquiries. And don't worry, there will be more features and enhancements introduced over time. So it's going to keep getting more and more intrusive. I know you're probably wondering, when is this amazing service available? Well, the target release timeframe is late July. It's not too far away, so keep an eye out for more information. As development progresses, more details will be shared through established reserve bank channels. If you want to learn more about the FedNow service, make sure to check out the link in the description. On the other hand, Ron DeSantis, the current governor of Florida and a Republican candidate for the presidency has been making waves with his stance on CBDCs. In fact, he recently signed a bill as Florida's governor to ban the use of CBDCs within his state. It's still in question, I think, whether or not that applies to the new Fed now payment system. And now he's taking his campaign against CBDCs to a national level. Speaking at the Family Leadership Summit in Iowa last Friday, DeSantis left no room for doubt. He boldly declared, quote, done, dead, not happening in this country. If I am the president on day one, we will nix central bank digital currency, end quote. It's clear that DeSantis holds strong concerns about CBDCs and the potential government-sanctioned surveillance they could enable. He has been a vocal critic of these digital currencies and believes they should not be allowed to flourish in the United States. This isn't the first time DeSantis has taken a firm stand against CBDCs. In March, he signed a bill in Florida that explicitly prohibited the use of a national CBDC as money within the state. It's evident that he's committed to safeguarding individual privacy and limiting government overreach. However, it's important to note that DeSantis has shown support for cryptocurrencies in general. He sees their use as a matter of civil liberty and even described Bitcoin as a, quote, threat to the current regime. End quote. So while he opposes CBDCs, he remains open to the broader world of crypto. Central bank digital currencies have become a contentious issue that divides the political landscape in the United States. 
The Republican Party in general tends to oppose CBDCs, while the Democrats have been relatively quiet on the subject. That's because they're probably trying to sneak it in for more control. As the 2024 presidential campaign heats up, it will be fascinating to see how different candidates navigate the growing influence of digital currencies and their potential impact on the economy, privacy, and national security. Zokyo, renowned for its security expertise and support for Web3 builders, is joining forces with the Conflux network to optimize security and accelerate innovation within the Conflux ecosystem. Zokyo will offer services such as smart contract auditing and penetration testing to projects building on the Conflux network. Conflux network, developed by the brilliant minds at Xingxiao University, I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that, is gaining significant traction in the cryptocurrency world. It addresses scalability and efficiency challenges by combining the best features of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Conflux has seen remarkable growth in the Chinese market, solidifying its position as one of the most impressive cryptocurrencies in 2023. Tristan Lee, Zokio's head of Southeast Asia, expressed excitement about the partnership, stating, quote, partnering with Conflux Network marks a significant milestone for Zokio. This collaboration strengthens our presence in the Asian market and allows us to contribute to the growth of the Conflux Network, end quote. The collaboration between Zokio and Conflux is crucial in the Web3 space, where security challenges are paramount due to the absence of central authority. By pooling their expertise and resources, the partnership aims to manage security risks arising from the integration of different systems and enforce robust security standards. Conflux Global Expansion Lead expressed enthusiasm about the alliance, stating, quote, we are thrilled to join forces with Zokio in bolstering the security of Conflux Network's ecosystem. Together, we fortify the foundation of trust, ensuring a safer and more robust Web3 environment, end quote. This strategic partnership brings together two organizations with a shared version or vision and extensive expertise. By leveraging their strengths, Zokio and Conflux are poised to drive Web3 innovation rooted in unwavering security. Conflux Network, with its unique advantages and regulatory compliance in China, provides an excellent platform for projects looking to expand into the Asian market. The network has collaborated with global brands and government entities in the region on blockchain initiatives. On the other hand, Zokio offers a range of services, including security auditing, cryptography, white hat hacking, UI and UX design, and full stack engineering to support legendary crypto and Web3 projects since 2018. With their combined strengths and immediate access to in-demand skills, Zokio and Conflux aim to accelerate time to market and help companies achieve their goals on time and on budget. Earlier this year, Apex Storage unveiled the X21 AIC, a dual PCB adding card that featured up to 21 Gen 4 NVMe SSD slots and supported up to 100 PCIe lanes. It was designed for massive storage capacities of up to 168 terabyte per card and boasted a unique passive cooling solution. Now Apex Storage is back with their new X16 AIC, featuring a more refined and compact design while still allowing users to configure up to 16 Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. The single slot card offers 84 PCIe four lanes and impressive read and write speeds of 31 gigabytes a second with support for capacities of over 128 terabytes per card, it's a powerhouse of storage. The Apex X16 AIC showcases a smart design with eight SSD slots on the front and eight on the back of the PCB. The front of the card incorporates an active cooling solution utilizing a single fan that directs airflow towards a central heat sink assembly. This setup effectively cools the PLX controller under the heat sink while also providing some cooling for the SSDs on the front side. In terms of pricing, the X16 AIC is currently listed at $1799 US, while its predecessor, the X21, is listed at $2799. US. Apex Storage also mentioned that volume discounts are available for those interested. We reached out to Apex Storage to inquire about their plans for a Gen 5 AIC, and they confirmed that it is in the works, but won't be released until at least the end of 2024. It will be fascinating to see how Apex Storage tackles the challenge of cooling the newer, potentially hotter SSDs in their future products. These products are certainly exciting for tech enthusiasts who crave ample high-speed storage. Of course, this would apply to anything along the lines of storage 
cryptocurrencies as well, like Filecoin and Storage, as well as, of course, the most famous Chia. The Apex Storage X16 AIC provides a convenient and powerful solution for those who require large storage capacities and lightning fast performance. Miner Ad now have launched a Dynex mining pool with 1% fees, making yesterday's mining for people pool look more enticing. For the past few weeks, there has been a need for miners to move off of Eka pool due to hash rate centralization going over 60%. As mentioned yesterday, Dynex is unique in that centralization is not purely dependent on hash rate. Dynex uses Malib endpoints to distribute work to the miners. This means that there is a secondary centralization issue that could eventually present manipulation vectors by pool owners and miners. We saw this potential with large hash rate improvements based on type of work in minor releases such as 1.0 Miner yesterday. Luckily, there is some good news here as well. Miner Ad now also released a Malib endpoint too. A quick note on the 1Z Miner update is that it will not be necessary until the release of Dynex version 23. Sorry for the miscommunication yesterday. The trunk has been hard at work, and they are proud to present the latest version of Flux, version 4.4.0. This release brings several new features, improvements, and bug fixes that enhance the functionality and user experience of the software. Let's take a closer look at the notable changes in this release. The first commit with the identifier 83B9036 allows FluxOS, the operating system that Flux runs on, to bind to privileged ports. This enables more flexibility in network configurations and facilitates smoother interactions with other applications. The second commit addresses an important issue by preventing unnecessary tries on the removal of Watchtower. This fix ensures that the Watchtower functionality works as intended by improving the overall reliability of Flux. Last but not least, the third commit in this release focuses on fixing an inconsistency related to address transactions API calls. This fix ensures that transactions associated with specific addresses are handled accurately, providing users with a more seamless experience. These updates and bug fixes demonstrate the Trunk's commitment to delivering a reliable and efficient software solution. The team's dedication to addressing user feedback and enhancing the performance of Flux is evident in each release. If you're already using Flux, they recommend updating to the latest version 4.4.0 to take advantage of these improvements. As always, make sure to follow the appropriate update procedures and back up your data before proceeding. Rigel 1.6.3 brings several enhancements and improvements to optimizing your mining experience. Let's start by highlighting some of the notable additions in this release. For those mining with Nexa and Zill, you'll be pleased to know that it's now possible to disable Zill DAG caching, which can increase Nexa hash rate on 8GB cards. This change provides more flexibility and control over your mining setup. Additionally, the Rigel team has introduced new parameters related to Zill mining. You can now use the Zill cache DAG parameter to enable or disable Zill DAG caching with the default setting being enabled. Furthermore, the Zill parameter allows you to enable or disable Zill mining per GPU individually, also set to enabled by default. The Rigel team has also made improvements to ergo mining. The new release reduces the drop in ERG hash rate during the pre-build phase when mining ERG plus Radiant and Ergo plus Caspa. This optimization ensures a smoother mining experience and more efficient use of resources. In response to user feedback, Rigel now allows setting two decimals for the dual ratio when using the dual mode parameter. The user interface has also received some attention in this release. Rigel now displays GPU core and memory offsets, providing real-time information about your hardware's performance. Additionally, the R key shortcut has been added, allowing you to redact your username or worker information when sharing screenshots of the minor output. Of course, no software release is complete without bug fixes. Rigel 1.6.3 addresses issues with the dual mode A1, A2 modes when triple mining, ensuring smooth and reliable operation. These updates and bug fixes showcase the Rigel's team commitment to delivering a reliable and feature-rich mining software. They listen to user feedback and continuously work towards improving the performance and usability of their product. If you're already using Rigel, it is highly recommended updating to the latest version, 1.6.3, to take advantage of the new features and bug fixes. As always, ensure you follow proper update procedures and back up your data before proceeding.
That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Please check out my crypto mining e-course over at sonofatech.com. It helps support the channel as well as provides you with a great value and all the things I've learned surrounding cryptocurrency mining over the past seven years. In addition, if you want my daily moves, check out sonofatech.locals.com for an awesome community. And finally, I will see you next Tuesday.